Felix Murray today, one of the co-founders of Gas House, a very amazing cannabis brand in the industry. Felix, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Hey, thank you. Glad to be here. Awesome. So I love to kick off these interviews by asking folks, do you remember the first time you smoked weed? What was that like? I do. Uh, the first time I smoked weed, I smoked with a older cousin of mine. She was about she's about four years older than me. And I was probably 14 years old at the time. And uh, we rolled us a, a very loose joint where the weed was falling out of it. And we had a bottle of Boom Farm. And I remember us, you know, me smoking and I think thinking I was high. I don't really thought I, I don't really know if I was high, but I thought I was. And I remember like being on the corner and laying down on my back and just kind of I was I was something. I might have been drunk out of the bowl farm. I don't know, but yeah, that was my first time for about feel, 14 years old. I feel like a lot of people have that experience where the first time they smoke weed, they don't get high for the second time, or maybe they do get high and they just don't know it. Yeah, the second time I got high, I thought somebody had actually drugged me, <laughs> you know, but that was just my first time my body reacted to, hey, what's going on here? And so, yeah, it was quite a different experience the second time, though. Not, not a pleasant one either, I, I might say. Yeah. So, tell me a little bit about how Gas House got formed. Where did the idea come from? And what was it like transitioning from the legacy market into the regulated market? Well, the idea actually was formed right here, sitting at this very table that I'm at, um, you know, sitting in my home in Atlanta or what have you. And so um, it was one of those things that uh, we've had a big influence as far as the culture of cannabis before it became legal. Um, you know, as, as far as like influence on, you know, what strains people were smoking and stuff like that or what have you. And so I just saw this opportunity to kind of get on, on the ground floor. And uh, I looked at it like, hey, I missed out on some other opportunities in tech and what have you. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't going to pass this up, being that we were such influencers in uh, what was going on in the market, you know. And so I just, this opportunity was there. I was like, let's go. Absolutely. And so, you know, breaking in to an emerging industry, it's still... I mean, this industry, we're like a, I like to say we're like a, a fresh canvas. We're, we're being painted on, we're writing history as we go along. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we're mm -hmm. creating the rules, of, not creating the rules, but you know, I mean, we're setting the foundation, the standards for our industry. Can you tell me what the term social equity means to you? Uh, social equity means giving, a, I would say a particular group, uh, a chance to uh, participate in ownership of the license in cannabis, you know? Um, it, it is put there as a mechanism to prevent um, other groups or people to come in and take advantage uh, just because they may be more uh, financially, maybe financially stronger. So it's, it's kind of, it's a mechanism to kind of balance things out uh, in place and try, and try to um, really right some of the wrongs that you know, have been done to people in these areas uh, that were really affected by this failed drug war. That's, 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 that's how I look at it. And so when you think about your journey into developing Gas House, you know, has being a minority helped or hurt you in this process? What has that been like for you? Uh, well, I, I've been on this journey, journey long enough to see things change and see that uh, being a minority is more accepted in the industry when I uh, first started and, and uh, you know, first really came above ground. You know, I got a lot of weird looks and stuff and uh, I don't know if everybody was, was really happy about that. But, you know, I, I did have, uh, you know, some people that work with me with open arms and stuff or what have you. And uh, I've seen the attitude uh, change and, you know, I've, I've seen where people actually try and help, you know, uh, minorities come into this space right now. And uh, yeah, so it, it's definitely been a change over, I would say the last five or six years, you know. And, you know, coming into this industry, mentorship is a huge part of it. You know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in cannabis, a lot of people trying to break into the industry, people that were operating in the legacy market, transitioning into the regulated market. Have mm -hmm. you had any mentors along the way or do you mentor anyone? Uh, I mentor quite a, quite a few guys. Uh, 
yeah, I really didn't have any mentors mentors in the cannabis space, you know. Um, but I do mentor quite a few, quite a few young men. Yes, I do. And would that be, you know, geared towards cultivation or distribution? What is really your area? Uh, 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 well, both. I'm, I'm, I'm very well-rounded uh, in the cannabis space, you know, when it comes to cultivation, distribution, brand creation, or what have you. And so guys I have, that I mentor, they come from all fields. I, I have uh, some young guys that I mentor in the uh, cultivation space, uh, as well as branding. Uh, I have guys that are, you know, in the delivery business and stuff or what have you since, you know, startup cost is not as great, you know, doing a delivery as it is doing a uh, storefront. And so, yeah, I uh, have quite a list of guys that I, you know, continue to help every day. And I always will be like that. That's just kind of what I do anyway. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, as one of the co-founders of Gas House, I mean, you guys really are one of the only black cultivators in the space. Would you say that's that's fair or... Uh, yes, we have, uh, you know, it's a uh, gentleman by the name of Chris Ball uh, with uh, Ball Family Farms out of L.A. He is, uh, you know, we're good friends with him. And so I would say you Gas House and Ball Family, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's some others that have license, but that are really known, maybe two. And yeah. why, why do you think that is? I mean, is it lack of access to resources, capital? What uh, do you think is limited? I think it's both. It's, it's lack of access, uh, resources. Um, I think uh, I would say, first of all, it, it, it took a long time before, you know, minorities would even trust getting into the space. We're very, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to cannabis, and, you know, you're being persecuted for something for so long, and you're distrustful of the institutions that are um, making the laws and giving these licenses out. It's kind of like, hey, am I going to admit to you know, I sell weed, you know, to these people, are they going to come back and uh, cause me strife behind it? And so we kind of got a late start or what have you. And uh, now I see that a lot of states now, they're making the threshold so high to even come into the space. Uh, when I first started, the threshold wasn't very high. And, uh, you know, we started in Oregon. And so, you know, license there, I think was $5,000. It just was a much easier process uh, then. But you know, when, when things start to generate income and money, uh, things, you know, for some, for some reason, uh, people find ways to make, uh, uh, make it harder to enter these markets and stuff. So that's what I think has happened now, you know, just the threshold, hey, you need a, a million dollars in the bank and you need to have a hundred thousand dollars that you, you may or you may not, you know, be granted a license, but you just have a hundred thousand dollars to burn and you need this and that. So the requirements are a lot higher now than they were, um, just say five years ago. Yeah, and you know, it always struck my attention that, you know, the concept of the social equity program is, is great and honorable. However, you know, it's unreasonable to expect people that have, you know, maybe been in prison for X amount of years to come right. out with a million dollars to just start this right. endeavor. That's ludicrous. And then, you know, you absolutely then comes in the investor, uh, you know, and we were having a lot of problems in certain states with social equity applicants losing the majority of their equity ownership in these businesses because who who just has two hundred thousand dollars in their back pocket? You know that's right. not what the common right. person has. So let's talk about federal legalization right now. We have a new admi uh, administration in the White House. Do you see federal legalization on the horizon? I mean, there's been some talk that maybe it'll happen this year. If it does, do you think that can is going to help? social equity in the cannabis industry heard it what are your thoughts there i think now uh that it will be coming under the democrats that um it should help and i'm hoping that by kamala being from the bay um the bay area and you know the bay area being one you know probably the first place in the country to institute a social equity program it's actually not worked out very well uh, uh, hoping that she'll put things in place to make sure that it benefits those, um, you know, who is meant for, you know. Yeah, I think a lot of states have had some kinks they need to work out to, you know. Right. It's just like, how, how are you going to, a, a lot of people that get into social equity, I mean, like, they've never run businesses, so you're throwing somebody in the fire, too, that, that doesn't have, hadn't been trained, I didn't have guidance on, 
you know, how to just set up these businesses correct, you know. So I think something needs to be done about that first, you know. So you're going to give me a license, but I have no business skill or I don't understand the regulations of what's going on or I don't, like I said, I don't have access to capital to be able to, to float my business for the next year as we all know that you have to do, uh, you know, most times in the new startups. So, right. you know, some things that definitely had to be worked out for sure. Absolutely. And I think, you know, what a lot of entrepreneurs experience is, is the fact that they may not break even in the first year. It may take two years. Could take oh, yeah. Years. You know, are you able to financially sustain yourself through that loss? Right. This amount of time. And uh, it's hard in the cannabis industry because um, very hard. it's very hard, you know, and, and props to anyone that can keep their head above water. But Gas House has done incredible work in the industry. You guys are very well known. You produce an amazing product that has won the Cannabis Cup six times. Is that correctly? Mm -hmm, correct. So tell us a little bit about that. I mean, what is it like to compete against other cultivators? What's it like to even enter a competition, let alone be judged? Um, well, I mean, our first competition where we took uh, two first place uh, trophies, I think were best um, highest testing flower and highest testing concentrate. Well, we, when we initially entered, I'm going to be honest, because it was a few years ago, you know, I had heard all the talk that, you know, people, you know, pay money and stuff, whatever, and, you know, uh, uh, made big contributions to these events. But, you know, I, I hadn't found any evidence of that or what have you. But I used to always hear the talk. So we, uh, we, we made our entries and I didn't think very much about it. And I told Kingston, uh, my business partner, I said, hey, this is a good product. Um, if they judge this competition fairly, we're going to win. I told them that. And so um, we didn't we didn't even go to the uh, the, uh, the announcement. You know, we were working at an event and it, the, the, the announcement was at just say four or five o'clock. We just kept working. We never went to the auditorium or what have you. And so after the event, you know, I looked up and here comes this guy, a friend of mine, and he got two trophies in the air and he's just like, hey, hey, these are our trophies. They kind of took a minute for it to set in. And I was just like, hey, we won? Like, we won, you know, of course we were the two only African-American guys, you know, almost in the building, you know? And I was just like, really just thankful. And I was just like, dang, they really did judge us fair. And I'll tell you a quick story about that. Uh, you know, our test results came out so high that it actually ran our stuff a second time to, to, to make sure that the equipment was calibrated properly. And so uh, by us winning those trophies, that just kind of, you know, solidified that, hey, these guys are here. They mean business. They grow some good product. Uh, you know, as we're looking at them as, you know, cultivators now, you know, not, not that black guys that grow like these guys are cultivators you know they they were just the real deal right here you know so yeah when it when it comes to cultivation you know how do you guys decide what strains you're going to grow i mean is it you know the thc is it the yield in the end like tell us a little bit about um, well def definitely you know yield and i will say thc but it's not a th thing where it has to be 30 percent. you know it's a it's a combination of things uh for me um it's just like, you know, a guy that selects wine, you know, I know the smell, the feel, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the texture, the aroma. Um, I take in a lot of factors uh, when I decide that we want to cultivate something, you know, I kind of, uh, my palate is, is uh, I would say very defined, you know, so. I can I know what our end user wants and what they're looking for. I know the notes that they're looking for, you know, so I just, I, I know our end user. Hey, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say is Gas House's signature, signature strain? Uh, right now it's uh, Pluto and that's what, you know, we're going crazy with it mm -hmm. and uh, people love it. Um, the reels that we get are crazy. And so, yeah, Pluto is, that's, that's our signature strain. Uh, originally, we started out with uh, the Gas House OG. That's we bust on the scene with that. And cannabis is, you know, it's, it's kind of like a little bit like I would say liquor, um, clothing. You know, trends. You know, people wearing baggy clothes and then they go to wearing fitted clothes or 
you know, you have years where uh, bourbon, you know, people were drinking a bunch of bourbon, then they started drinking a lot of vodka, and now everybody on the tequila wave. And so now we kind of advanced from, uh, I would say, OG Kush a few years ago, and then it went off into the flavors and the combinations of, I would say, gas strains and the flavor strains being bred together, what have you, so you can get notes of both. So, yeah, yes. And what are you smoking right now? Pluto, that's what I smoke mostly. Every day I have Pluto, uh, I smoke other things, uh, other strains and stuff or what have you, but I just found one that I really liked and so this is what I indulge in uh, most of the time, you know, so. Nice. Yes, definitely. Awesome. Well, I, I look forward to trying it next time I'm in California. No, for, for sure. So where can people find your product? Where can we find Gas House? Um, we are in most cookies. Uh, cookies would be LA, Cookies Modesto, uh, um, Green Line Delivery, um, Royal Highness down in the desert. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, anywhere as a cookies, you're going to find our, find our spot. And they are probably uh, in most locations and stuff in most in most states where uh, the product is, is legal there. So, yeah. you know, we in, we are in Michigan. We get a release in Maryland. Of course, we're in California. Um, yeah, so they keep calling me. But yeah, so. Okay, awesome. And so uh, when it comes to the web, if people want to follow you, uh, what's your Instagram profile? Do you guys have a website? People yes, 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 yes. My uh, gas house um, is gas house underscore the brand okay. is our Instagram. And you know, my Instagram is Felix Murray, E-N-T. And then we have Kingston, it's uh, Kingston underscore approved. Excellent. And your mm -hmm. website, is it uh, gashouse.com? Gashouseog.com. Love it. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, Felix, this is, was great making your acquaintance. I enjoyed this tremendously. So thank you so much for taking it was the time. It was, it was good talking to you as well.